Well, welcome back to the north coast of the Dominican Republic on the countryside. Uh, it's old Barry. Uh, gosh, it's getting hot. We're hitting now 90s. Hey, listen, uh, about six days ago, I released a video, and it uh, it was uh, titled Children's Emergency Quarantine Centers. And it was about a fellow named Amand Bundy who did some research and really couldn't believe what he found. And judging by the comments, uh, it rocked a lot of people. There was, uh, I would say, a slim minority of our viewers were were well aware of any, or were aware of anything that had to do with um, the possibility of them gaining legal right to separate you from your own children. Of course, we're talking about Bill HR-6666, and it's not a coincidence that's the number of the bill. I talk enough about psychological head games. you got to learn how to be aware of them to defend against them. Anyway, we did receive a lot of comments about it, and uh, what came up um, to me from another great subscriber who's helping us out is another piece, uh, and this is about what's taking place back in my home country of Canada. And um, if it's not very, very foreboding, if it's, if it's not p really bothersome to you, there is, there is definitely something wrong with you. So you have a listen to this. It's about 16 minutes long. It's a uh, it's out and out. It's it's. There's no other words. It's scary. But uh, this are these are some of the rules that some of the schools that are now reopening in Quebec. Uh, some of the new rules are coming into fruition in public schools. You're not going to believe it. Watch. So there's something that I brought up when I spoke to E. Michael Jones recently, and it was the current state of grocery shopping and how awful it is. Queuing in a big line, separated by two meters, a general sense of demoralization. Social distancing like this accomplishes multiple goals at once. It prepares the populace for food shortages. It proves that widespread social conditioning and mass behavior modification is possible. It divides and isolates the populace and makes people treat each other with suspicion and fear. It breaks social trust. It's also part of a process of conditioning the populace to associate being in public places as unpleasant and filled with arbitrary and cumbersome rules. And it also makes shopping for groceries a pain, thus encouraging people to stay home and order their groceries online having them delivered to their homes. I wanted to bring this up after reading this article about schools in Quebec, Canada. This is from Organic Prepper by Daisy Luther. What will schools look like after COVID? Prison camps. They'll look like prison camps. If you've been wondering what it will look like when the kids go back to school, one school in Quebec has released their new guidelines and they're shocking. Apparently schools are going to look a lot like prison camps. This is another example of how things will not just go back to normal. Everything is changing, including life for our children. Yeah, so we're being primed for this. That all public settings, pubs, restaurants, sporting venues, public transport, the workplace, even schools will all change to adopt social distancing measures and human beings will feel more like mice in a laboratory experiment. As I mentioned previously, after 9-11, airport security never went back to normal. So, in a similar fashion, it appears that all public settings are expected to have restrictive and draconian policies in place that are generally a nuisance. These are like ritualistic hoops that we have to jump through just to go about our day-to-day -day lives. I have a nagging feeling here that the intention is to keep certain aspects of social distancing even after this crisis has fully abated. After all, we keep hearing the term new normal, right? It's going to be the new norm. We know the plan is a mandatory vaccine, but I would have my doubts that the powers that be truly want social distancing to end. After all, it's been a very effective way of dividing the populace. Divide and conquer has always been a powerful way of controlling people. Here are the guidelines one school has laid out. Schools in Quebec, Canada are reopening on May 19th and one school released its guidelines. This list was submitted by a parent to the Facebook page Kate for Education. The school was not named for the privacy of the parent, 
All emphasis is mine, she says. To minimise movement, we forecast assigning students to classes nearest the Berlin Street entrance on all three floors if needed only. Once assigned to a class, students will spend their entire day, including lunchtime, in their assigned seats. Wow. Yeah. That doesn't sound like prison or anything. Students must expect to be regrouped based on the number of students returning. Students must not expect to return to their regular classes with their classmates. Well, there goes friendships and healthy human interactions and bonding, which are so important in the developmental years for children. Your child may not be with the same teachers as before, as several members of our staff will not be returning to school. Teachers not returning to school will continue working and keeping close contact with students remotely from home, as recommended by the government. Activities completed while in school will not be evaluated or graded. No physical materials will be transported back and forth between home and school. Students must include a mini garbage and recycling bag with their lunch in order to collect their personal garbage and dispose of it at home. This is insanity. Whatever happened to trash cans? In this new order, everyone is expected to behave like their obsessive compulsive germaphobes. All students must bring in their personal labelled and filled water bottle as water fountains won't be available. When? When is society going to wake up to what we're going through? What we're really going through and what this is really all about? Control and destroying the humanity in people. Sharing of all items, pencils, pens, sharpeners, wax crayons, rulers, toys, is not permitted. So, I guess children will be afraid and distrustful of each other and kept in a constant state of fear about the world around them. When weather permits, recess breaks will be held outdoors and will entail of walking outside safely distanced from one another in a prearranged pattern. Let me read that again. Walking outside safely distanced from one another in a prearranged pattern. So this is basically like a prison camp for children where they will walk around in prearranged lines while being monitored by teachers. Sounds like so much fun. I mean, who needs playtime? I cannot believe what I'm reading. Anyway, I guess we have to ask, how did the human immune system ever cope before big pharma vaccines, because ultimately, that's where all of this is leading to, right? Apparently, we have to live like this until the vaccine comes along. Gatherings, groups of students together will not be permitted. So, friendship, camaraderie, and a healthy childhood in your formative school years. That's all cancelled now, kids. Sorry. It's for your own good, though. Limited travel throughout the school by all during the day. Bathroom visits will be monitored, escorted, so that proper disinfection by our caretakers can follow before another student uses the facilities. Well, that's not absurd and creepy as hell or anything. These rules are how you make a generation of future worker drones who are broken of their humanity, who do what they're told and comply with whatever the government tells them, as if they're just reprogrammable machines. And I know what you're thinking. We'll just homeschool our kids from now on. But remote online learning is exactly what the powers that be want. They know that most people will think that these kinds of rules are intolerable. And they'll therefore want to homeschool instead. And online learning just means children will be further detached from each other, thus creating more social distancing, more isolation. And of course, homeschooling is not possible for many parents because they need to work. As per government recommendations, masks and gloves will not be provided. Students are certainly welcomed to bring these items from home. They are also invited to carry their own personal disinfecting wipes with them if they wish. Lockers will no longer be used. Students will place their spring-summer jackets behind the chair they will be using and their school bags under their assigned desks. There will be no cafeteria service or home and school pizza and frozen yogurt days. And no fun either. Schooling is about to become torturous, dread-inducing, and deeply dehumanizing. There will be no physical activity taking place in the gym. There goes exercise, which is necessary to keep healthy. 
No art classes, although art and craft projects can be promoted as home suggestions. No library periods and no drama classes. And I guess no humanity, hope, love, color, self-expression, meaning or joy, it seems. Only fear, distrust, paranoia and compliance with rigid authoritarianism. No fundraisers or after-school activities will take place. Parent vo- oh, I can't believe what I'm reading, sorry. Parent volunteers will not be permitted in school. We recommend your child brings a book or two of interest from home to read. Students with fever or flu-like symptoms will be returned home. The article continues. Lest it sound as though this is a total outlier, here is the guidance from another school. So you can click on that if you re want to read the article. It's similar but not quite as harsh, and here are documents from the Minister of Education outlining the guidelines to be followed by the schools. And did you notice that there are quite a few inconsistencies? Kids can't take anything back and forth from school, you know, except for their lunches, their garbage, their water, their PPE, and some books to read. That stuff doesn't count as going back and forth and clearly is germ-free. This sounds more like a prison for dangerous offenders than a nurturing place for children to learn and grow. Exactly. This kind of environment would be deeply scarring, and I can't begin to fathom how destructive it could be. The article goes on. It's important to note that returning is not mandatory for the rest of this school year. Teachers will still be available for online learning if parents wish to keep their children home. I simply cannot fathom treating children in this way. If a homeschool parent had similar rules for their children, family services would immediately be at their door for the radical mistreatment of their offspring. The fact that the government can not only allow but order the public school system to abide by guidelines is utter madness. This is not right and it is not healthy, mentally, physically or psychologically. This setting seems like it would be psychologically damaging. Imagine the culture of fear this creates for children. When you drum into a child the constant worry that others might be infectious, how do you expect that child to learn to communicate with others, make friends, and enjoy learning? This is how you make children afraid of human contact. Yes, I would call these rules abusive. Active children will be miserable. If you think the number of diagnoses for ADHD and similar behavioral issues is high now, just wait until energetic seven-year-olds are forced to sit in the same chair all day and then walk properly distanced around a playground past all the fun stuff like swings and slides. If you want a population of worker bees who will quietly submit to authority and distance themselves completely from the influence of others, just like adults are doing now, this is how you produce that population. You drum into them that they can't even choose when to go to the bathroom and they can't congregate with others and that they must remain seated with their hands strictly kept to themselves at all times. And I suspect that this is part of a process to subvert the West, likely the influence of China. I wonder if the monitoring of the bathroom will be similar to what was discussed in this article or if somebody will actually go with them. And if so, isn't an adult being alone in the bathroom with a child pretty inappropriate? You teach them that every single moment is structured and supervised. Yes, Big Brother is always watching you. You teach them to walk only in orderly formation. No skipping, no running, no playing. Dear Lord, I pray to God every day that this is not our future. And just think, all this time public school parents were worried about homeschooled kids not being properly socialized with others. A very good article indeed. By the way, before I continue this video, I have an exclusive BitChute video for you over on my BitChute account link below, so please check that out. Computing Forever has 50,000 subscribers on BitChute. You will find lots of your favorite content creators over there. Black Pigeon, Stick Saxonhammer, Stefan Molyneux, uh, Gran Torino, lots and lots of people are over there. And uh, my channel, it, this is a free speech platform. My channel has 50,000, getting some decent uh, view counts, but obviously it's a much smaller platform than YouTube. Uh, this video, this exclusive video uploaded on May 6th is called Responding to the World Health Organization Global Response Pledge. Basically, there was a video uploaded a few days ago 
where all the leaders of the not so free world, uh, it's not so free anymore, and it's a 25 minute video. I think you will get a great deal out of this and I hope that you'll watch it. It's called Responding to the World Health Organization Global Response Pledge. And a few days ago in the European Union, they convened this conference um, and it's basically the world leaders over a teleconference pledging money, taxpayers' money, into this uh, crisis to various uh, to, to basically find the vaccine. And uh, after a few minutes, it will become very clear that uh, this is this is going to be mandatory. That's the, at least they want to make it mandatory. It's 25 minutes long, and I think that you will get a great deal out of it. So I will include that linked below as well, and in a pinned comment on the top of this YouTube video. So I hope that you will watch that. Um, so that's an, I need to do more exclusive bit shoot videos actually. So especially especially now, because um, you know it's getting more difficult. It is getting much more difficult to talk about this on YouTube. Also, please share this bit shoot video. It's very important that you do that because uh, obviously my reach and discovery is much smaller on bit shoot than it would be on a big platform like YouTube. So I hope you enjoy that video. Well, from one nightmarish outcome to another, this article is from Bloomberg. The office you left is not going to be the office you return to. Goodbye, open desk plan. Hello, masks, temperature checks, and plexiglass walls. So, a prison then. Well, all our rights are gone, and we now live in a police state, a de facto police state because of a virus with the same fatality rate as the seasonal flu. So it's hardly a surprise at this point. New normal, folks. It's the new norm. Your first day headed back to the office will likely feel different from the minute you wake up. Yeah, that was kind of the plan all along, wasn't it? Imagine the morning begins with a self-administered COVID-19 symptom and temperature check. An app will report the results to your boss. If all's well, a low-occupancy company-provided shuttle will take you to work. Everyone on it will be wearing a mask. A symbol of your subjugation. Once at the office, a second health check. Attendants will strictly control access to doors, elevators, and common areas to prevent close contact. <laughs> Couldn't have that. The route around the office will be one way only, just like the grocery store can't walk back the way you came. Formerly jammed open desk plans will sit half empty. You feel like a mouse in a laboratory experiment yet? You may be encased in a makeshift cubicle made of plexiglass sheets. At least when people are plugged into the matrix in the movie and kept as battery farmed power sources, they at least got to experience a virtual reality simulation that was much more pleasant than this situation. To avoid overcrowding, key cards or sensors will monitor your whereabouts throughout the day. Your smartphone may vibrate to alert you to co-worker traffic, like ways for commuting to the copy machine. <laughs> Lunch will come hermetically sealed. Say goodbye to communal coffee breaks. I know there's many of you who work from home and this doesn't affect you, but keep in mind that working from home isn't for everyone, and some people need the social aspect of a workplace with other people in it. We are social animals, although they're trying very hard to break us of this. This is immensely impersonal, and it just goes to show there is no humanity behind the social distancing or the lockdown measures we're currently complying with. This is not about saving humanity. It's not about saving lives. It's about enslaving humanity and using this crisis as an excuse to bring about a truly dystopian world. And most people are sleepwalking into this. The sooner the better people can wake up. I don't know when that's going to be. With cities and states around the country preparing to ease virus restrictions in the coming months, companies are rethinking office life. The pre-COVID workplace, with its shared desks and common areas designed for creative collisions, is getting a makeover for the social distancing era. Perhaps one of the worst eras in human history. So far, what employers have come up with is a mashup of airport security-style entrance protocols and surveillance combined with precautions already seen at grocery stores like sneeze guards and partitions. There you have it. Airport security 
for every aspect of your life from school, workplace, social venues, restaurants, and so forth. It's all going to come with restrictions, controls, surveillance, forced adherence to authority, limitations on freedom. And as we've seen throughout this lockdown thus far, all over the world, from taking a walk outside, people now instinctively give each other a wide berth. They see you coming down the street and they do everything in their power to walk as far away from you as possible. People wear masks, gloves, they wash their hands obsessively, they keep their distance at the grocery line. And I can tell you now, people are going to continue to do these things long after this current crisis ends because they've been brainwashed into this now, they've been conditioned, it feels like a prudent measure all right, it feels like it's better to be safe than sorry. It's just good sense, a good course of action, a good precaution. You know, you never know, okay? I've started this, might as well continue, yeah? No handshakes, no hugs, no standing near each other. No trust, just suspicion, fear, paranoia, maybe even a tinge of disgust as you see another human being walking towards you. They've successfully re-engineered the human animal in just a matter of of weeks. They've broken something in us, something foundational. Final article is from CNN. This restaurant in Amsterdam introduced quarantine greenhouses so diners can eat while social distancing. Missing restaurants while social distancing? You're not alone. One restaurant in the Netherlands, though, has found a solution. Mediamatic ETEN, a restaurant in Amsterdam, is offering a four-course vegetarian menu for diners served to guests while they sit in their own personal quarantine greenhouses. And uh, there's the pictures. I, I gotta go, guys. I gotta stop. There's, there's only so much I can handle at this point. Is this the people we are becoming? So terrified of death, we'll do anything, any absurd thing to stay alive, including living like slaves and drones with the humanity and spirit robbed from us. Not really living authentic human lives. But there's fates worse than death. This is what I try to communicate to people. But they don't listen. There's living like a slave and a drone with the humanity and spirit robbed from us. Death is coming anyway. Okay, sooner or later, it's going to happen to all of us. So what kind of quality of life do you want to live? If there is not a major miraculous global awakening of the vast majority of people very soon, we are in serious trouble. I don't know what it's going to take, especially with ever-increasing censorship across all major social networks. I don't know if there's going to be one single mass red-pilling event that can open most people's eyes. That seems overly optimistic at this point. Obviously, economic collapse is inevitable, including a Great Depression. Most people don't even realize this. But I'm very concerned about the headspace, the mindset of most people who seem completely asleep. They seem to be in favor of more subjugation and hanging on the every word of their government and mainstream media. I'm gravely concerned that most people will comply with demands for a mandatory vaccine and a digital immunity proof system and a mass surveillance state that comes along with that. Because most people will take the path of least resistance and will behave in a herd-like fashion like sheep. This is what we've seen so far throughout this crisis. I see no evidence that anything will change in the future unless there's some kind of great big awakening moment. And that just sounds naive to even suggest that it could happen that way. I have no idea how it would even come about. So I will leave it there. This video is the first of a two-part series, and I will be concluding it with a video called The People We Were. So stay tuned for that. Oh, hi, welcome back. Uh some pretty serious uh, subject matter, I would say. That if this does not bother every person, regardless if you have children, but if this does not bother every person that has watched that video, there is something wrong, seriously wrong. Um, you know, I thought Almond's video... We were well aware of, of, of these things for many years. I mean, God, we've, we've,
tried to put it in front of people's faces so many times. And I've already told you honestly how many people that have been reaching out to me that haven't reached out to me for years all of a sudden about saying, uh, you know, like the we laugh so hard, but yet it all came true, you know. And um, whether it's a lot of this is due, uh, which is all about uh, Bill HR six 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 six, and no, it's not a coincidence. It's four sixes is the number of the bill again. If you understand symbolism and you understand these tricks on the mind, the psyche, uh, you'll understand how to defend against them. Then you will not live in fear because you will realize that that's all it is. Um, it's only we, in the long run, we do it to ourselves because we are the we are the majority of people. Just because we've been lamed or we've been turned into a herd of sheep does not mean we're still not the majority. And it's very rare that a lion cares about the opinion of a sheep, no matter how many there are. So there is time to pick up the bootstraps. And after a while, you know, like I say, there's a, a big difference between violence and force. And one day we'll explain those differences. But what's currently taking place is totally orchestrated. Uh, I mean, all but the deepest, again, subconsciously controlled fools cannot see it. Whether it's the COVID, whether it's the crashing of the economy by forcing these lockdowns, vaccine issues, whether it's the undeniable tidal wave of post-vaccine era diseases and disorders that have affect humanity in every way, shape, and form. Many of you watching this right now are dealing with it firsthand, whether it's autism, whether it's asthma, Alzheimer's, whether it's one of the many cancers that, I mean, in youth, the cancer in youth is sore. It's, I don't know how, that's why I put up this graph uh, on the computer. Uh, I have so many of them, but if, if, a, if a graph like that can't talk to you from the 1970s till now and see the difference and what's going on here with autism, now one in 38 young American males under seven. It used to be one in 2,500. If these kind of numbers were asthma, it used to be one in 20, 2,300, I believe. Now it's one in five. If these numbers are not enough to just say stop the rest, I've seen enough coordinating it to the timelines of pre- and post-vaccine era, I don't know if you can be helped. Anyway, um, there has been... A fair bit of good news released, uh, regardless of, again, you know, blue or red side here. I don't care. I'm Canadian, and our country's a mess anyway. So I'm the wrong guy to be talking about any form of politics. To me, a good politician, a definition, would be one who can climb over the dead bodies fastest. That, to me, is an accurate of any powerful politician at the top. Now, the other thing I wanted to say, uh, if this does not show you how they're trying to change humanity, social distancing. If this doesn't, when you go to restaurants, how many of you have made comments to me even I, on our trips when, when you come down and, and uh, you know, come down and take a look about maybe living here and we're having a few beers and starting to talk and everything like that. How many of you even said, I can't believe it. You see people now and they text from one end of the table to the other. Yeah. It's all about dehumanizing, dehumanization. One day I'm going to go into it, but not on this video. But there's so much information, and I sometimes apologize. I just get ram, you know, ramble off in too many topics. But one day I'm going to show you some good information about how they've used social media like Facebook and and uh, Twitter and, uh, and, and you know Instagram and all of them uh, that give you a thumbs up or a like or whatever that. Uh, Two and, two and a half thumbs up equal the same dopamine release as one small line of cocaine. Don't tell me people aren't addicted to these things, okay? People's days are being made by a thumb up from someone they never even personally met, and their days are ruined by a thumbs down. I don't pay any attention to comments. That comment is a subjective view from some individual to be highly unbalanced individual at that too, and you're going to let that ruin your day.
or you're going to let that make your day. See, all these things do is take the control, what you have, your only control, which is yourself. And it places it in the hands of others to mold it for you. Think about that. But we'll get into that on another subject, another topic, okay? It's a very interesting, very interesting pathway to venture down. Till next time, it's old Barry and DR. Appreciate all the help passing out this information. Uh, Together, all of us that are doing this kind of forwarding, uh, while we're still, you know, some things are opening up, things a little bit, but while we're still under a partially controlled lockdown, we're going to get this information out. And you know what? We're going to keep it going even after we open up again, because if we let down, if we let our guard down this time, it's very well me, very well may be the last time we have a chance to do anything about it. Till next time, it's Barry. Bye.